many of you have heard of Prop 13? Why was there a sigh? So just keep your hands up. Hey, how many of you heard of Prop 13? Uh, so here's a quiz. Just, you won't get graded. Uh, keep your arms up. Keep your arms up. How many of you think, uh, I just had, I went to Starbucks to get my coffee. Uh, Starbucks, next to Starbucks, or across the street was a Target, and across the street I think was like a Marriott. How many of you think all of those are subsidized or covered by Prop 13? Anybody? Arms up. Keep your arms up. Sub covered by Prop 13. They're covered by, they're included within it. So uh, those of you who uh, kept your arms up, you all right. For those of you who were wondering, uh, you know, of course, the chancellor has his arm up, so he, he knows. He knows the answer. Um, for all of you who are wondering, yes, every single property is actually covered by Prop 13 here, here in the state. Uh, and they all get the same subsidies and protections that you do for your home. And, and that's one of the reasons for my talk. So to start with the, the fiscal situation, Californians right now only agree on two things. Nobody wants taxes. Nobody wants, I'm not nobody, but in general, people don't want new taxes and they definitely don't want new fees. We just voted on that. Uh, but yet, nobody wants cuts to education, transportation, public safety, public health, you name it. Maybe the only thing people are okay cutting are corrections, which ironically are, are, the, are the one thing going up in the state. Uh, our current budget gap, this is um, based on the preliminary estimates, right, not the current uh, numbers that you read today as to where we've been cutting and renegotiating, was about $26 billion. And every year, for the last few years, we've had a $20 billion deficit. And we have what we call, it's a, stru it's a structural deficit, which means that we're spending more than we're bringing in, as kind of Fred talked about. And the way we've been balancing our budget is part cuts and part smoke and mirrors. And a lot of kicking the can down the road. A lot of passing the buck to your kids, to my kids, if any of you are fortunate enough to have grandchildren, grandchildren. Um, and that's really what our, one of our major problems is. You know, the, when, when Prop 13 was first passed, there was a big thing is, don't worry, we're not going to cut teachers. You know, we're going to cut the fat in education. We're going to cut administrators. It, it really wasn't true. We have now, um, you can see just from 01 to 10, right, we've reduced 12.5% in per pupil spending in California. We rank at the bottom of everything in education. California, when I was, I, I'm a public school uh, product of California. Um, and when, when I was going through at least uh, kindergarten and most of my elementary school, we, we had the best education system in the state. Uh, Prop 13 passed while I was in school. And I watched little by little how everything was dismantled. You know, uh, Arts was now optional, music was now optional, uh, P was optional, e everything that you know, uh, could be cut was cut. So if you wonder, you know, because people will always say, you might have friends, for those, I mean, I, I feel like I'm preaching a little bit to the choir here today, but you're going to have friends who all say, you know, we can cut our way there. We can, um, you know, there's so much fat in the system. Government spends way too much money. So I, I just want to arm you with some statistics so that you can have an intelligent conversation with your friends. You know, according to John Mockler, who is probably one of the foremost education thinkers in the state, uh, we spend less of our personal income on education, which is rather sad, in 1960. So we used to spend about 5.6% of our personal income on education. Today we do about 3.3%. Uh, and that's at the same time that we've been getting uh, a significant amount of aid. The, the, this slide I find the, the most informative. Right now our general fund is down from about 100 billion to 80, roughly 80 billion, you know, 80 something billion. It fluctuates roughly. So if you go, well, 20 billion, we could just kind of cut that, right? We, could, we can cut that. 20 billion in the budget means you're cutting the entire higher ed budget. The entire higher ed, that means you're every, all the money going to UC, every UC, not just one, not just my alma mater, which is Berkeley, but every UC, not just, you know, Cindy's alma mater, which is San Jose State, every CSU. That's how you got 9 billion. So you'd only get halfway there. You'd only get, yeah, it's too much, right? You only get halfway there. The other nine billion would have to come from, you know, or ten billion, but to be corrections. That is what you'd have to do to get to twenty billion dollars. It's a lot of money. So we get into the kind of the crux of why I'm here, which is Prop 13. Prop 13 we passed in '78. You know, it's one percent. 
of your tax rate. It goes up 2% a year. The biggest thing, right, is Prop 13 has um, not allowed us to raise taxes in the legislature or really anywhere in the state unless we have a two-thirds vote, either in the legislature or a two-thirds vote of the people. So if you're wondering, you know, when you're looking at parcel taxes and when you're looking at bonds, uh, at least what used to be um, bonds, uh, school bonds are different now, but there's always a two-thirds vote. So what, what could we do? You know, so again, um, John kind of, you know, I'm, you know, Lady and I are like the closet radi the radicals in California, right? We're talking about the thing that no one wants to talk about, which is what might actually help close your budget gap. Hopefully, I, I've convinced you that you cannot close it on cuts alone. So you got to do a little bit of both. Fred had a slide that saw if we just restored the vehicle license fee back to what it was when Pete Wilson was governor. Again, not a radical. When Pete Wilson was governor, that's six billion dollars, right? If we actually talked about uh, removing what I call the loophole of Prop 13 to, you know, so Starbucks or Target or Marriott would just pay normally what they pay all across the country, that could be worth seven and a half billion dollars. And that number's a number from the uh, California State Board of Equalization. It's not my number, it's their number. It's what they gave the 21st Century Commission uh, on taxes. Yeah. Um, I just got a question about the whole prison system. I mean, it costs $52,000 a year to house a nonviolent drug offender. Over yeah. one third of the inmates in there are nonviolent drug offenders. You know, I mean, if we just like take a, a little bit of that, I think, and just take a look at rehabilitation other than, you know, I, I mean, that's got to close some of the gap, right? Right. Wouldn't you rather spend $50,000 per student? Right now we're doing about seven, 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 eight hundred. Right. I mean, that's what we're talking about. The difference. And I think, unfortunately, we've kind of bought into it. We, meaning the voters. We've gotten the wool pulled over our eyes, and we haven't, you know, really been able to do anything about it. So, that, so that's part of why I'm, I'm here today is, you know, I know that, again, you're not the skeptics, but you all have 10 friends who are. And, you know, many of them might even, you know, have kids in your, in your classes. So of all the people, I mean, they should be wondering, hey, how come we're spending 50 grand per prisoner, but only $8,000 per student? What's wrong with that picture? If education is a priority, how come that's not being reflected? Yes. Is that real inflation in just a dollars? You know what? I don't think so. I think that's actual dollars. So it's not even inflation in just a I think it's just today's dollars versus dollars from 2001. So it would be even worse. So, so it would be significantly worse. Yes? In response to his question about the prison, the whole prison budget isn't enough to solve the education. No, that's right. I mean, that's the other thing, right? But, but isn't it a sad state to say that, you know, the, the main reason, Calif I believe, I mean, and again, I'm not an economist. Um, you know, the California is the reason it is, is because of education. We have the best education in the world, public education in the world. We attracted people not just who did well in California, but from all around the world who come here to study. And we had an incredible system. Isn't it a sad state to say that our prison budget is as high as our commitment to higher education in California? I mean, doesn't that kind of make you scratch your head and go like, what's, what's going on? Is that, is that really what you want your state to reflect? Yeah. We have to be more like pragmatic about solving an issue rather than ideological because I think our problem with our times right now, we don't have times for your, like, your ideology, like whether Democratic or Republican, we have to focus on the issue and getting the education way better and keeping our system because we are known in the world our youth system is well known in the world as one of the best yeah. educational systems. But right now it's going all down the drain just because we have a bunch of legislators who don't know what they're doing. They're arguing about ideological things like what's right and what's not right. I don't care what they think, you know, but we need to focus on the issue and get it solved. And I, like you said in regards to the cuts, I do agree. We do have to cut some programs that don't work. And yes, we have to invest more money in the ones that do work and help our communities. And our focus should be in our communities, when we focus on our communities, we're solving the whole state gap by doing that. So I don't know why these people can't figure this out. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why either. But uh, again, I, I say that half jokingly. Some of them are actually my friends. So um, you know, here here's the issue. So we we are in a fiscal crisis, right? I have a fiscal job. Part of my job is to bring in money for our county. So what's interesting is during the fiscal crisis, 
all the discussion doesn't have a dollar sign attached to it, right? If you're facing a family budget issue, what do you do? You either try to figure out a way to make more money or you start, stop spending money. So anytime you got a question regarding education, right? I mean, I, I'm all for let's not cut education, but the bottom line is it's not responsible. Meaning, unless we find a way to fund education, unless you have a proposal to fund education, then cutting education just means we're cutting something else. I mean, you know, fewer police stations, less paved roads, less buses, less, you know, the county hospital gets closed, the, the library gets closed. We have to do both. Again, we have to do both. And it's not enough just to say, hey, don't cut me. It's really about making sure that we can do both. Appropriations Committee hearings um, at the state capitol a couple of years ago, and I was appalled to see the Correctional Officers Union bullying the state legislature into getting more money for the prison system. And that's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking. I know it's not going to close the budget gap, but we really need to take a look at California's prison system and how money's well, being spent. And I, I think you know your point is that the moderators. Uh, prerogative here, and, and we can save questions and comments to the end. Sure. We have two more speakers and we're running out of time. My, so. my apologies. So let me, let me just be, let, let, let me just be uh, wrap it up in a second. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with this Menlo Park, uh, Menlo Park and the Trader Joe's and the Dragers, I'll give you the best, one of the best examples around Prop 13. You got Trader Joe's paying less taxes than probably what some of you are paying on your home. And why is that? Because the property owner who owns that land, who owns that mall, they handed it down. They've owned it for 30-something plus years. They've now handed it down to their heirs. Their heirs live in Massachusetts. So we're not even subsidizing Californians now. We're subsidizing people who are heirs who don't even live in this state to the tune of, let's say, you know, $60,000. We're seeing the same split in San Francisco where now, commercial property owners used to pay the bulk of property taxes in San Francisco before Prop 13. You can see now today, the bulk of property taxes are being paid by residential customers. Exactly the opposite effect of what everybody said was going to happen, is that homeowners are actually bearing the brunt, not commercial property owners. So again, you know, what I'd love for you to do is join me at Close the Loophole. I got a website, uh, closetheloophole.com. Find us on Facebook. Uh, really what we need to send a message to is that, again, it's, not ide it's nothing to do with ideology. It's about dollars and cents. We're short money for schools. So the only way you get more money is you have to go get more revenue. So if anybody has other ideas, I'm all ears. But again, you know, all the ideas are unpopular. You know, Fred mentioned vehicle license fee, it's unpopular. Prop 13, unpopular. Oil extraction is unpopular. All the tax measures are unpopular. But at some point, we have to make tough choices and say, are, 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 do we move ahead and have some courage in order to make sure that we're saving the future for our kids? So again, I hope you'll join me at, this, uh, at any of our sites. Thanks a lot. Good, thank you, Phil.